Helen, and I'm here with your latest natural sciences lesson, grade sevens. Let's have some fun today. Let's learn about the law of conservation of energy. Wow, what a mouthful, all right? We're going to take it very easily. It sounds incredibly difficult, but let's break down that title into small, easy bites, and then you'll understand it, and it'll be simple. Let's start by reminding you what you already know about energy transfers. Well, you've learned that energy can be transferred between stores in a system, in other words, from an object to another object, or within an object, we can see a transfer of maybe chemical energy to kinetic energy. We also just observed in our last lesson that sometimes the energy can be lost from the system. For example, it could be lost in the form of heat energy. Now, let's have a look at this electric circuit in the picture. Where are the energy transfers happening? And I don't want you to worry about the two children that are doing the experiment. I just want you to focus on the electric circuit. Let's think of the electric circuit as a system. And let's follow all of the energy transfers. Where are these energy transfers happening? Well, in the battery, right, we've got a little cell there, we have got chemical potential energy. And the chemical potential energy is being transferred into electrical energy. Let's just write chemical up here so we can follow these transfers, electrical energy. And remember that the electrical energy is due to particles moving along the wire. And so therefore, electrical energy is a form of kinetic energy. And we can see that what's going to happen is that energy is going to be transferred to the light bulb. And what is going to happen is the light bulb is going to glow or it's going to be switched on. It's going to shine. And we're going to see then the energy in the form of light. And the energy transfer, the system of energy transfers can be shown by this little diagram saying chemical energy to electrical uh, chemical energy to electrical kinetic energy and we see the light glow which is light energy. But what if we touched that light bulb? It would feel hot. In other words, we've got some energy being lost from the system. We don't light up an electric light bulb to keep ourselves warm. We light up the electric light bulb for the purposes of producing light energy. But in the process of producing what we want from the system, we also are going to produce some heat energy. And we say that that system, that heat is lost from the system. It's wasteful. It's not helping us at all. Now, how does this relate to the topic of today? The law of conservation of energy. Now, you know what energy is. You've learned precisely what energy is. Energy is the potential of the ability to bring about work or action, movement. What do we mean by a law? Well, I think you think about laws as being rules. There's the law of the road. There's the law of how you may behave when you're driving a car on the road. There are all sorts of laws that we have to control and keep our society running. But there are also scientific laws. And these scientific laws are descriptions of how 
how certain events take place in the universe. All right? So it's just a description of how, in other words, it's looking at a process, how something takes place somewhere in the universe. You know about the law of gravity. We know that what goes up must come down. All right? The law of gravity. Now we're learning about another law, the law of conservation of energy. The thing about scientific laws is that they are true everywhere in the universe. They don't explain how or even why things happen. They just state what happens. This happens, then that happens. That's all. They don't give cause. They don't give any kind of explanation as to how this complicated process is working. That is the job of scientific theories. Scientific theories explain the whys and the reasons. But scientific laws just state this happens. So what we're looking at is a law to do with energy. And in the middle of the word energy and law, we have this word conservation. And maybe you think about conservation in terms of animals and wildlife being conserved. What we mean there in terms of conservation in national parks or wildlife, we're talking about the wild animals, the plants that are natural in the area being kept the same, not being negatively affected by humans. All right? So when we conserve an area like the Kruger National Park, for example, we are preserving it or keeping it the same. Now let's think about conservation in terms of physics. In science, conservation is the principle where the total value of something there we go, the total value remains constant or stays the same. We're not going to decrease it. We're not going to increase it. This total value is going to stay the same while we're talking about the system. So in the Kruger Park, our wild animals and our plants are going to stay the same. We know that the system is an object or a group of objects being studied by a scientist. So there we have the ball, here we have the foot, and the ball moves. That is a little system. And we know that energy is the capacity or ability to do work. So now let's go and take all of these ideas and words and concepts and put them together to understand what we mean by the law of conservation of energy. The law of conservation of energy is very simple. Energy, right, there's that word, stays constant, there's the conservation, in a system. And the whole thing is just simply a statement. We don't know how, we don't know why, we're just saying that that is a fact. That is a law. And anywhere we go in the universe, that is going to apply, all right? We haven't found places where this does not apply. So therefore, it is a scientific law, all right? Energy stays constant in a system. That's the law of conservation of energy. Let's unpack that law a little bit and let's see what it implies or what it means. It means that we cannot create more energy. The energy that is in a system, the energy that a system has is given to it from another system or from some input. The system itself cannot create more energy. We also understand that energy cannot be destroyed. The system cannot destroy that energy. It can transfer that energy on but it can't destroy it. So the amount of energy that is present in the system is going to stay constant. It's going to be 
conserved. If we want, we can say that energy is going to come into the system, it's going to be transferred within the system or the object and out of the object or the system. But the amount of energy we should be able to trace directly in kilojoules even, we should be able to say 20 kilojoules entered the system. Some went off as kinetic energy, some went off as heat energy, and some were transferred to the soccer ball, which is another system. So we can see that even though we've got energy being transferred into different pathways, we're not creating more energy and we're not destroying that energy. We're simply passing the energy on. Do you remember playing a game called Broken Telephone when you were much younger? You took a message and you whispered that little message into someone's ear. And they whispered it into the ear of the person next to them. And so on. And the end of our chain or our system of messengers, that last person spoke out the message. And sometimes that message wasn't what the original person whispered. So maybe the original person whispered, you look pretty today. And at the end, it said, I want tea today. All right, we can see how pretty tea and I want tea maybe got confused and changed slightly along the way. But we started with a message, we end with a message. It might be in a different form, but we have conservation of message. In the same way, the energy is going to go into the system. It might be transferred into other forms of energy, but it's always going to be the same when it comes out the amount of energy is going to be the same. We know that the energy, as we've been discussing, is transferred from one form or one energy store to another. So from gravitational potential energy to kinetic energy or chemical potential energy to kinetic energy. We also know that it can be transferred to heat energy. And very often we don't need that heat energy. And so we could say that the energy can be dissipated. Look at that word, dissipated. What we mean by it's transferred out of that system into less useful, or I suppose we could call them wasted forms of energy. But we must come back to that central law of conservation of energy. The total energy in the system remains the same. When one energy store loses energy, the other energy store must gain that amount of energy as well. Even if there are multiple stores that that stored energy went to, if we added up that amount of energy, it must remain the same. So we would need to calculate in, for example, any heat lost from a system. Let's look at an example of the law of conservation of energy. You have a cell phone. The battery in your phone stores chemical potential energy. When the phone is in use, the chemical potential energy decreases but it can't be lost, it can't be destroyed, it must go somewhere. And where it's going is to produce electrical work. It's making light and it's making sound. The phone may even vibrate and therefore some mechanical kinetic energy is also lost or lost. We must remember it's not being destroyed, it's simply being transferred and all of that is what we want the phone to be doing, but the phone may get hot. So some energy is being dissipated or wasted as heat energy. If we add up the total amount of energy for, from the chemical input and we minus the energy for the light, the sound, the vibration and all the work that the phone does, 
and we subtract the amount of heat energy that it loses or wastes, we will find that the total at the beginning of the system and the total at the end of the system are equal. All right, that's it for today. More about energy next time. Bye-bye, grade sevens.